How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be talking about our nonpolar amino acids. So let's jump right into it with our most basic amino acid, and that's going to be glycine. And glycine's three letter abbreviation is simply GLY. Its one letter abbreviation is also simple, G. And its structure is also simple. In fact, all we're going to do, to do is draw our backbone. So we have our N terminus and a C terminus, and we're done. Now, if we want to be a bit more explicit about what the R group of glycine is, we can just write in an H. And of course, just like any other amino acid, there's also going to be an H that we don't draw. So that's very basically glycine. Now, its classification, of course, is nonpolar. Its pKr is not applicable because there is no acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, they're not going to be super applicable for the MCAT other than the fact that the C alpha carbon is achiral. So every other amino acid will have the L stereochemistry uh, or stereochemical configuration, but glycine will be achiral, and that is because it is only attached to three different things instead of four different things. So let's move on to alanine, also a very simple amino acid. So its three-letter abbreviation will be ALA. Its one-letter abbreviation is A. And its structure is also rather simple. So we have our N-terminus, C-terminus, and just one carbon. And that's it. We're done. Its classification is nonpolar. Its pKr is also not applicable because there is no acidic hydrogen in our R group. And as far as special characteristics, there are some, but they are not within the scope of the MCAT. Now let's move on to leucine. Its three letter abbreviation is LEU. One letter abbreviation, L, pretty intuitive. And its structure is gonna be slightly more complex, but not too much so. So now that we've finished drawing the backbone, we go one carbon out, two carbon out, and then we draw a V of two carbons. So in all, we have four carbons in our R group. Its classification is nonpolar. Its pKr is also non-existent because it does not have an acidic hydrogen in its R group. And as far as special characteristics, they are not within the scope of the MCAT. Now isoleucine, its three-letter abbreviation is a little less intuitive. So we have an I and L and an E. So that middle letter is an L, not an I. And the one letter abbreviation will be I. And so let's draw its structure as well, starting with the backbone and then the R group. So we have one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. And instead of making the V, we attach our fourth carbon to this first carbon that came off the branch. So same number of carbons being four, but different connectivity. Now its classification, of course, is nonpolar, just a hydrocarbon. And its pKr is non-existent because there is no acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, uh, they are not within the scope of the MCAT. All right, having covered those, let's get into methionine, proline, and valine, starting with methionine. So its three-letter abbreviation is MET. Its one letter abbreviation is M, and its structure is pretty interesting. So we learn about methionine a lot because it is the start codon, which we'll get to, but many people don't know its structure. So we have one carbon, two carbon, and then we attach to a sulfur group with two lone pairs, and then end with one more carbon. Now its classification is, of course, nonpolar, or maybe that's not so obvious because we do have a sulfur. However, this is pretty much acts as if it were a hydrocarbon because that sulfur group doesn't have too much chemical reactivity with anything else. It doesn't really create any sort of dipole or any polarity at all. Its pKr is non-existent because it does not have an acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, of course, it is encoded by the start codon. So you should definitely know what the start codon is, and that will be AUG. 
so found in mRNA. Now let's move on to proline. It's a three letter abbreviation is pro. It's one letter abbreviation is P. Now its structure is gonna be interesting. It is gonna be the only amino acid where we need to pay a little bit of extra attention to how we draw the backbone. So let's just draw an N and we'll leave off the hydrogens for now. We draw a carbon, another carbon for our C terminus. And now we start drawing our R group. So we have one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and then this third carbon reaches back and attaches to the nitrogen. Now this nitrogen at physiological pH will be protonated with two hydrogens instead of three. That is because one of those spots that would have normally been taken up by hydrogen has been occupied by that bond to carbon. Now its classification is nonpolar and its pKr is of course non-existent because there's no acidic hydrogen. And for special characteristics, it adds rigidity to the polypeptide, which of course forms the protein. So that nitrogen attachment with the R group gives that uh, polypeptide, specifically at that area, very little room to move around because of that rigid connection. One thing we could also mention about proline is that it is technically not an amino acid, but an amino acid although we just generally think of it as an amino acid. But strictly speaking, in chemical terms, it is an amino acid. Now let's look at valine. So valine's three-letter abbreviation is V-A-L. Its one-letter abbreviation is V, and its structure, so let's draw our backbone, is similarly a V, but we can draw it upside down. So one, two, three carbons, drawn in that upside-down V shape. Its classification will be nonpolar, as it is only high hydrogens and carbons. Its pKr, of course, is non-existent because there is no acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, um, they are not within the scope of the MCAT. Now, finally, let's finish up with phenylalanine and tryptophan. So the three-letter abbreviation for phenylalanine is PHE. Its one-letter abbreviation is less intuitive. It is F. So one could say perhaps that it is phonetically intuitive because if we sound out phenylalanine, we have the F sound in the middle. So that's one way you can remember that the one letter abbreviation of phenylalanine is F. Now structure is also going to be intuitive if we think about the name. So we have one carbon coming off and that's gonna be our quote unquote alanine. And that alanine group is going to be attached to a phenyl group, or basically just a benzene ring. So we have phenyl alanine. So I forgot that L in there. Phenyl alanine. Now, our classification of phenyl alanine is nonpolar because we only have hydrogens and carbons. Its pKr is also non existent because there is no acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, phenylalanine is one of the aromatic amino acids. And that is going to be because of the benzene ring. Now, that means it will show up in UV spec. So UV spec, again, is UV spectroscopy, UV spec for short. Now, finally, let's finish up with tryptophan. Tryptophan's three-letter abbreviation is TRIP, or TRP. Its one-letter abbreviation is kind of wacky. W. So I like to think of tryptophan as kind of being a wacky amino acid. It has kind of a unique structure. So that is helpful, a helpful mnemonic to remember that it's one letter abbreviation is W. Now let's finish with its structure. So we say the most difficult for last because tryptophan is kind of tricky to draw. So here we have our backbone. Now we need to go one carbon out and then another carbon which will be the start of our aromatic ring structure. So one carbon to the left, one to the right. This will form a double bond. And this will carbon will complex with a nitrogen. And this nitrogen will be attached to another carbon. So that's our first ring here. And then our second ring will simply be kind of a benzene ring. 
So that's what we have going on. And we can also, of course, draw a bunch of different resonance structures with this aromatic ring system. All right. So its classification, despite looking polar, it is nonpolar. And its PKR is not applicable because there's no really good acidic hydrogen. And as far as special characteristics, it is aromatic. And because it is aromatic with such extensive conjugation, or meaning that our pi electrons are kind of in these alternating double bond arrangements, it will show up most intensely. So it shows up, oops, shows up most intensely in UV spec or UV spectroscopy. So that's it for the nonpolar amino acids. Congratulations on learning all 20 of your proteinogenic amino acids. This will definitely pay off on the MCAT if you learn these 20 well. Now before I sign off, I want to cover one last thing, and that's what are the aliphatic amino acids. Sometimes you'll see this when you're reading a research passage in either the biology biochem section or the chem phys section. Quite simply, an aliphatic amino acid is a hydrocarbon, usually some sort of chain or branch chain, that's not aromatic. So that's as simply as I can put it. So we're talking straight chain alkanes. So maybe a hexane, so one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Or we could have this guy or any variety of different alkanes that you want. We can also have alkenes, which would be considered aliphatic, or even alkynes, so triple bonds, that could also be considered aliphatic. Therefore, an aliphatic amino acid is one whose R group is aliphatic. So none of the backbones, of course, are going to be aliphatic because they contain nitrogen and oxygen. But alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, and proline are hydrocarbon R groups. So they are definitely all aliphatic. Now, those that are variably classified aliphatic, and the reason I say this is that when looking at different sources, some sources classified glycine and methionine as aliphatic, some did not. And the reason for that is that glycine only has one hydrogen and that doesn't make it very polar or nonpolar. And methionine, despite having a sulfur group, acts as a very nonpolar uh, amino acid. So it's considered sort of an honorary aliphatic amino acid. But these are definitely your bread and butter aliphatic amino acids. Alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, and proline. Now those nonpolar acids that are definitely not aliphatic are going to be phenylalanine, and tryptophan, and of course any other polar, basic, or acidic amino acid because those will not be hydrocarbons, because hydrocarbons are not polar, basic, or acidic. All right, that's the 20 proteinogenic amino acids. Thank you so much for watching the entire amino acid series, and let me know in the comments what different videos or even a new series you would like to see next for your MCAT exam.